the goat is not even born. Because <laughs> the generation that is present benefit of a huge advantage. They have knowledge, technology that we didn't have before. And we had the, the knowledge that the other generation did not have before. But I believe the best, the goat is not even born yet. As good as they are today, I think you in sport where you can measure the performance, uh, track and field, uh, Olympic lifting, you can you know someone is better than the other one because you can measure the performance. Fighting is all subjective. We always uh, debate of who would win, but ten the tendency in sport is that the performance get better. I don't think it's because the athlete necessarily get better. It's because they have access to better technology, knowledge, and they learn from their predecessor. As long as that knowledge is transferred forward. So, something tells me that the greatest of all time lived a few thousand years ago and it's forgotten some of the greatest warriors. Like you imagine mm -hmm. the kind of grapplers, we just, the history didn't record them. Mm. There, there could have been small tribes where they developed mini UFCs and they've developed the kind of things we, you have to think of like uh, the Gracies, just a small family was able to develop so much so quickly. I, I often, as this this discussion with John, and I think it's very important like to, to mention, I ask you very uh, several times, like what would happen if we would take a fighter of modern days facing the champion of uh, pancreation? This of, is an interesting question. And you, you brought some incredible <laughs> good point and, and, and yeah. people don't, don't realize it, you know? Yeah, no, I, I think um, one of the great tragedies of martial arts history is our loss of, uh, the historical records of pancreation. Like most of what we know was, uh, from what I'm told, is actually lost in the, the, the fires of the Library of Alexandria. And we're left with only a pitiful amount of information on uh, pancreation matches. But what we do know is that there was a very large uh, participation in the sport and that it was widely considered the most popular sport in the ancient Olympics and that it was represented in the ancient Olympics for many hundreds of years, plus a long period of time before its introduction into the ancient Olympics. And so the development time that it may have had would have been very significant. It, uh, as far as we know, most of the development would have been in the major Greek city states for uh, literally hundreds of years of development. Um, given its prestige as an Olympic sport, then the best athletes would have been doing it. Some of the sharpest minds that we know of in human history were involved in the sport. Um, Plato, the great philosopher, uh, was a pancreationist in his youth. In fact, his name, Plato, is a nickname. Platus is like plate. It means broad or big guy, like the big guy, and um, uh, he spoke often about pancreation in, in his written works. Um, imagine people with the intelligence of Plato thinking about grappling technique for hundreds of years in the most popular Olympic sport of that time. Significant numbers of people with financial backing as city-states put great prestige upon Olympic success. They would have funneled athletes in brought in the best coaches, and they had that for many hundreds of years. Like It's quite conceivable that the best pancreation athletes were of the absolute first quality. And um, uh, it, it's, it, it's so sad to think we'll never know what was their skill level. And 